All right, I thought I'd do this. I'm not an expert at any of this stuff. I'm really not. But um, I am a, the world's leading expert in things that used to confuse the crap out of me that I understand a little better now. Um, this was shown to me by a pro on the forum, Reg, uh, a few years ago. And I honestly, I haven't done as much work with it as I should. But uh, it just it cleared up a lot of things. So his main thing is that basically anything that you could voice on the guitar can it can be boiled down to um, three minor scales that everybody ought to know. Natural minor, just traditional diatonic major minor, then harmonic minor and melodic minor. And probably melodic minor before harmonic minor, but you need you need those three just for one thing to understand how music works and to be able to harmonize those. So that's kind of his starting point is anytime you have a, even a static chord, if you have a static chord like E minor, where you're just moving an inner voice, you know, a, a traditional uh, cash pattern, um, a jazz cliche. When you're when you're moving that one voice, we tend to we tend to see voicings as you know if we have a voicing like that or a dominant voicing, you know, as if the voices themselves are just moving, kind of almost randomly, and that's that's the way people talk about it sometimes. At least it was in these these older threads when he jumped in, but the way that it was being talked about was well, you you take your dominant chords for example. And you just, you know, you start adding a flat 9 and a flat 13, and you start altering notes. And uh, it, it was talked about in that way, that you just, you, and then you, you learn every inversion of just all your major minor, all your dominant, all your half diminished, and then you work on just changing those one note at a time, making them ninths, making them 13s, making them 11s. And... Uh, Reg came on and he didn't talk about it that way. It's like, it's, 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 that's not really the way you do it. You know, uh, if you alter a note, where's that note coming from? It's really coming from another scale. Usually it's coming from, um, functionally and theory wise, it, a lot of times they're coming from harmonic minor. Sometimes they originate in blues. But so you've got harmoni harmonic minor as a functional basis for most. Kind of chromatic harmonic movements or blues notes um, but you can also use and jazzers do use melodic minor as kind of an organizing framework from which you can choose to harmonize your harmonic minor references and even just blue note references so if, you, if you've got something like you know where you're just adding a blue note you can use uh, you can use melodic minor to kind of organize those notes, and what that does is that allows you to systematize, just like this thread is talking about. It allows you to systematize voicings. So even if it's just a momentary passing one single note, you can take that one single note. If you choose to, you can organize it in such a way that then you can play voicings all over the fretboard, and you can see all of them as one thing. They can be practiced and woodshed as one single entity at a time and then you just you, you learn to uh, utilize them so that when you play something you're not dealing with thing one things one chord at a time or one note at a time now his beginning reference for that is just the physical one so just learn to harmonize the chord scale so for major He'd say, don't worry about every inversion at first. Don't worry about every single possible fingering and iteration. Start in G major. Learn to play G major with a root on the sixth string. G major with a root on the fifth string. And G major with a root on the fourth string. And then, you know, add up or extensions. And then, uh, so you, you just do things like add up or extensions. Okay, so there I've got a whole G major 7 harmonized over a G major scale. Same thing with the A minor. I guess 
Alaska guitar. And you can do the same thing. For the whole scale. Just, just learn to harmonize. Uh, each chord and play it just just play it melodically really a lot of the inner voices are going to come naturally from doing things like uh, Wolfen talked about where you're subbing chord chords for each other so for G major 7 you get a, a G major 9 sound just by playing B minor 7 so if you play the if, if G major 7 is the one chord if you play the three chord over it you, you get you get a your inner voices you, you get all of that movement in the inner voices if you just if you just learn things and you learn to start playing B minor 7 or G major 7 okay you get a sixth chord quality if you do the same thing down a third so reg is a big relationships for just just beginner establishing chord relationships is up a third and down a third. Think a relative major and relative minor, okay? Except Reg is doing it both ways. So for G major seven, he's thinking B minor seven. He's also thinking E minor seven. But he does that for all the chord qualities in the chord, and it really helps with filling in gaps because, I mean, most of us know the one chord better than we know the three chord. But the three chord, it's, it, it's always brought up, how do you voice Phrygian chords? And if you start with Reg's way, you, you immediately see, oh, if you just voice the three chord as if it's as if it's a five chord or a one chord, you get these beautiful solutions, and they've already got the ninths and the thirteenths or sixths built into them. And so you get this inner voice, and the the additional voices help smooth it out. You know, like this. a little better with that inner voice that I'm borrowing from the other scale degree. So that in and of itself is cool. It it eliminates the need to do what everybody was talking about in that old thread originally, which was go ahead and learn, you know, all the four inversions for each chord quality on each string set, and then additionally start replacing notes to create thirteenths, ninths, elevenths, the susses, different chord qualities and Reg would say you get the same thing if we if you just play di diatonically in sub things so understand that major is all one kind of grid and you you can you can pretty quickly learn to just you know just things you can kind of play for different chord types and if you do a uh, melodic minor love Reg to do a video where he does his actual uh, just just basic melodic application of chords on scale degrees like that. So once you learn all of melodic minor, you can you can do the same kind of things. Now using it is a whole separate thing, but his point that most of us we can't even begin to think about using it because we can't play it is very true. Because once you learn the chord qualities of melodic minor, you learn to be able to, to use them and apply them, even if it's just really basic, simple ways in the beginning. Anyway, if I take something like just a standard jazz cliche, you know, where it just... And I learned them all, they're just E minor. So E minor, E minor major 7, E minor 7, E minor 6. The way Reg and other jazz players would look at that is say, well, you can look at it that way statically, but really you're changing scales. You know, E minor, you can think of as being, you know, E minor, Aeolian, just E minor, okay? And then when you do this and play the major 7 on the minor chord, you're really playing a different scale. So that's referencing harmonic minor, or you could use melodic minor for the same thing. So if you use melodic minor, for example, anyway, you could say E melodic minor, but most players would tend to see that as just B altered. So, so 
So that that movement, it's 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 two scales. It's not one. It doesn't matter that you're only doing it for a second. It's just a voice moving. People say those things, and I understand, and it's true. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter how you think about it. It's 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 whatever makes it easier to play. Okay. So I can just figure that out one voice at a time, listening to a record. Oh, that's what he's playing. But how do I extrapolate that to other voicings and, and playing in a freer way and systematizing, like Thread talked about, um, a set of voicings that just work to cover that basic idea. So if I just choose to say that's B altered because I just I want to call it that for purposes of comping, okay, then I can add other voicings from B altered. And that's that's really cool. So you kind of go. Then I'm back. And then I could choose to. So I'm playing E minor, B altered, E minor, B altered. And I'm just kind of alternating to create that chromatic movement that was implied by my cheesy Montuno. Other part of learning to apply this stuff is is he talks about establishing relationships. The first kind of level of relationship is up a third, down a third. You can sub them. You can sub chord patterns from one with the other. So if I've got a song like How High the Moon, I'm gonna play a tune like that. So you can actually use your you can use your E minor Montuno, and you can you can use that stuff um, for G major sounds. You can just, where there's music. So I'd have to practice anyway. That but that's the kind of ideas that you, that you can explore with this stuff. And in doing a one five, this is one five E minor and B seven. So. That's like the, for Reg, he talk, the way he talks about it, that's like the most kind of basic, cheesy, vanilla level. Um, he, he's more interested in bluesier chord patterns. So, um, I don't know, just, just other things like... You know, like, a, you know, four sevens a little more interesting. He uses things like, uh, for all of his... All of his minor chords could be could be a, a two five, and you use like a regular uh, or Dorian and that's a that's a chord pattern that's that's real common in jazz. So he calls that a relationship. So you could do that. Even if it's just a G major chord, he's he's gonna play. He's gonna play chord patterns just like you use a one six two five in jazz as a common chord pattern, and people put a bracket around. It, is that it's just G major, okay? But they'll play a one six two five, and that's the thing Wolf was talking about. Is is once you get into this, you could just every time you have a minor chord. Could be E minor, it could be G major. You know, you can kind of sub 
a lot of those things in. So that's a very different starting point. Now, the more voicings I do have, that's just using basic voicings and using the same ones. But I can apply those a lot of different ways. Okay, so his deal is, do you really want to spend all of your time finding voicings one at a time in hundreds of different combinations before you learn to apply basic voicings? Because but the consequence of learning to apply them in different ways is you get what are effectively new voicings, things that I never would have come up with. For thinking of that as just moving voices around for E minor. It's actually another chord, and it doesn't have to be that way. You know, jazz players say, oh, that's all E minor. So it's both at the same time. They think of everything as simplifying, like think of multiple chords as one chord, but they also think at kind of that uh, molecular level of, yeah, but it's got all these component parts, and you can really break them down and, and see it. it. It's simpler to see it as separate voicings, and it's simpler to see it all as one thing. It's, it, I, I really think it, it jazz is a tessellation. So things that work in a tune at a macro level also work on one chord for one beat. And think of, okay, I'm going to choose to see that as a different scale. I'm going I'm to see that as B altered. It's, it's a killer way to think about things in a new way.